15 wickets fell on the second day of the LV County Championship match at Lords as Surrey took charge of their local derby with Middlesex. A battling opening day had seen Rory Burns score 100 in Surrey's sluggish 267 for four. Few would have been prepared after that for the flurry of wickets on this day. The first of them fell in the third over, Tim Murta trapping Stephen Davis in front before he'd added to his overnight score of 24. Although this looked like a good batting pitch at the home of cricket, the batsmen did have to work hard for their runs and that job was now left to Xander De Brain and new man Gary Wilson, who came into this match on the back of 150 in the draw with Sussex. They ensured that a third batting bonus point was accrued. It took a brute of a delivery from Toby Rowland-Jones to get rid of De Brain for 34. He could do little to avoid this perfect bouncer which was glove behind. And, somewhat surprisingly, the rest of the Surrey innings fell apart quickly. Paul Sterling claimed his maiden championship wicket of Gareth Batty before Corey Collymore saw the back of Chris Tremlett, who nicked off. Collymore soon struck again, not bothering to look at the umpire, so convinced was he that Tim Lindley was LBW. And Jay Dernbach drilled a flighted ball from Sterling into the hands of Chris Rogers. From 311 for five, Surrey had been dismissed for 338 at lunchtime. Middlesex would have been thrilled with their morning's work. It had been another session which had turned a game just as they'd done in their wins over Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire. Rogers, in his first inning since being named in Australia's Ashes squad at the age of 35, looked in the mood to ensure that his bowler's morning's efforts would not be wasted. He'd scored 21 of the 28 runs on the board when he overstretched to reach a delivery from De Brain and dragged it back onto his middle stump. Still, no matter, as Joe Denley now joined Sam Robson and the runs kept on coming at a good rate. Robson has started to turn some heads this summer given his early season form, while Denley looks like a man hungry for runs, even though he's yet to have a huge impact with the bat this summer. Perhaps this was going to be his day as he and Robson played with some confidence in adding 44 runs for the second wicket. Middlesex were moving into a decent position, one they would have surely taken at the start of the day. But with the total on 72, they then lost Denley for 21 as he was a little late on his shot and trapped in front by Dernbach. The problem for Middlesex in the end turned out to be that they simply couldn't fashion the kind of partnership that Burns and Aaron Haranath had managed on the opening day of this fixture. Robson and Darwin Milan got things going, only for Milan to go leg before to Batty's first ball on the stroke of T. You have to admire Batty's celebration too. Then on the restart, things started to unravel for the home side after Robson on 36 nicked a brain to Davis. That left Middlesex on 92 for four, only for the two new men at the crease, John Simpson and Neil Dexter, to try to start a fight back. They stuck it out for an hour and adding a patient 29 runs for the fifth wicket. How they would have liked to see out the last hour as well. That though was not to be as that final hour was dominated instead by the visitors. Dernbach had Dexter held by Vikram Solanke in the slips. Sterling's first championship innings lasted only one ball, although a man of much more experience would have done well to keep this quick delivery from Dernbach out. Simpson then gifted his wicket away by driving Batty to Lindley at mid-on. And Roland Jones got a leading edge to give Tremler to return catch, which left Middlesex in a huge hole on 141 for eight. From nowhere, the follow-on was a real possibility. Middlesex needed to get to 189 to avoid that, and that was still some way away. In Murta, though, they have a man at number nine who certainly knows one end of his bat from the other. The problem is that he may well have to bat his side out of bother alone, as Middlesex also lost Stephen Finn before the day was through, LBW to Lindley. So, after a dramatic last session, Middlesex ended a remarkable day on 161 for 9, and that means that the last pair of Murta and Collymore have to somehow scrape out another 28 runs for the last wicket to avoid that follow-on. This was their worst day of the summer to date, and their rival's best.